What's up, Philadelphia sports fans? I am Anthony Pinto. And I am Greg Hall. And we are War Room Philly, the OGs in the house tonight. Uh, what's, up? what's up, Greg? Um, it's good, man. You know, it's uh, another week, and uh, yeah, it's good to, good to have you back. Um, got a, a lot has changed since since we've we've last talked. You know, I believe there the last sports. I believe the last time we talked, we were we were very hopeful of a, pl- a, a Flyers playoff run. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll get into that and how much of a success or not it was. Um, I had to take off my shirt for a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah it was, that, that was during the push-ups meta again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, uh, you know, it's like my it's like my like uh, short thirty day training uh, regimen, I, and I like make sure I can do push-ups, and then it's like all right, they're they're off my back, and now I can let off again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah, we had we had a lot. We got bubble baseball going on right now. Uh, we got. The the bubble finals, the NBA finals are winding down. Uh, the Sixers fired and hired a new coach. Doc Rivers is in town. Um, the Eagles the are second the second best Doc ever. For 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 Philly or yeah. like for basketball? No, or... for Philly, Roy Halladay. Okay, well you got Doctor J too. So that's you know. Doctor. Okay, Come I on. just Who wanted calls to call Doctor J Doc. No one. <laughs> Have you ever, yo, Doc J? Doesn't happen. No, you know, never see, you it. don't. They don't do that. You're right. It's never Doc <laughs> J, but they do say they. I've I've heard him referred to as the Doc. The Doc. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. You got me on a technicality there. <laughs> um, yeah. But but yeah, uh, we, we you know and, and yeah, unless he brings multiple championships, it's going to be hard to relinquish the throne of. One Roy Halladay, who was just I mean, greatness, is it? Like, greatness every time he took the mound. Uh, obviously, yeah. didn't get the World Series. In fact, I think yesterday was the ten-year anniversary of his uh, October no-hitter. Um, Might have been even today. It was, it was either the, it was either today or yesterday. I remember seeing yeah. uh, the days start to mold together at work. And, don't and, they ever? And I, I don't remember if it was today that I was wasting time on my cell phone or yesterday that I was wasting time on my cell phone that I saw it. Um, but but yeah, uh, again, it's just like to think back on that and his his legacy. It's you know it's always it's always fun to think about um, and and just the greatness and how just desperately we we want to get back to October baseball here in Philadelphia. Um, what up? What up? Uh, I almost said what up, Greg. But yeah, what up, Greg? Uh, but hey, what up, Joe? <laughs> yeah, who is bye. saying what up, Greg? Uh, what up? Yeah, what up? So it's uh, it's funny too because you know I'm <laughs> such a basketball hater that even if Doc Rivers wins three championships in a row, I'll still be like, but did he pitch a no hitter in the playoffs? And, no, and you're it's, welcome. And it's a fair point from someone who is baseball first, but you know I wouldn't say I'm a basketball hater. Um, I am a bad, you know me, I'm, I'm a shameless basketball hater. Yeah, you are to, uh, would you say it's like the same with my soccer? Like, where it's like, not as, no, 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 not as much. So I'll watch every Sixers game, okay. but I won't, pay, but I won't pay attention. Okay. Like, right, so that's still way better than my soccer, which is like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I've matured as a, as a, as a per- I don't hate on soccer anymore. And like, I'm wearing an esports jersey. I have no room and I acknowledge that. I've came to this, you know, cornerstone of my life, and I, yeah. I, I realize that, you know, I, I can't hate on people that like soccer, especially you throw Philly in front of anything, and I'm a fan. The union um, are on right now. Yeah. Like, as we're recording And this that's why show. I was like, I want to do the show right now, so that way I can't say I missed it, you know, for any other, <laughs> no. No, I did, I will say this, the hardest I've ever tried to watch a soccer game was when the union came back, and it was the first live sporting event. We, we, we were... Had, Facebook messaging when yeah. they scored a goal. I know. I, I, I that was, and, and it was, you know, I, I tried. You uh, almost got excited. It, look, I tell you what, if it's on <laughs> while I'm at work, I will always tune in. I'm that's listen. If the Sixers play a day game, I won't pass. Exactly. It like, cause, yeah. and I, and I, I hope that's something we take into when we return to, to normal is just daytime sports because yeah. I mean, last week, Greg, uh, when we had the the first the first round of the opening round of the playoffs, you had one o'clock a playoff game starting, two o'clock a playoff game starting, twelve o'clock. Three, yeah, yeah, that's right. It started at twelve. Excuse no, me. No, twelve oh eight. Let's go. Every hour on the out, I'm getting chills. Seriously, <laughs> getting chills thinking about how good of a day that was. 
just yeah. as a baseball. We need we need more like opening day next year. Bring that energy. I don't care yeah. if there's fan whatever the situation is. Like that's that's things that we need to take back into, you know, when we return to normal. You, you know what's have funny? Fan Sunday. How about that? I didn't even think yeah. about that. And you know what's <laughs> funny too is the city of Miami COVID hockey is, was is the best hockey. Is allowing sixty five thousand fans in the Dolphin <laughs> Stadium, right? Well, hold on, hold on. So, so that mean that tells me that they're going to allow fans at you know Marlins Park next year and whatever the Heat games. Maybe that's indoors, so I don't know. Maybe that's different. But the Marlins have a retractable roof, so they could technically play some outdoor games. And I, I, I imagine they'll let at least a limited capacity of fans in there, if not the full thing. And it's hilarious to me that if the Phillies open up, let's say 7,500 fans are av- available or maybe you know, 10,000 fans, they would still outdraw the Marlins if the Marlins allowed full capacity. <laughs> that is so funny. Coming off a playoff run for the Marlins, yeah. that would be so funny to me. Yeah, I think did the Marlins, did they win today? Oh, no, they, no they, they, they are down, down 2-0 in the yeah, series. Yeah, yeah. And I'll never forget because that's Ian Anderson pitching for the Braves. And he was taken number three in the draft the year we took Moniac number one. Mm. So basically, we passed on Ian Anderson, who was a high school arm. I get it, but he hasn't given up a run in eighteen playoff innings this year, and he has he's given up. I think his ERA in the regular season was like one point six. He's a future ace, and we're sitting here in Mickey Moniac, who might be a fourth outfielder. That's, like if that doesn't sum up Clentax era, I don't know what does. That's a good way to start. You know, to start things off when when bad things in Philadelphia is you know still trending. Uh, and <laughs> and Nelson, I saw. I don't think it was this weekend, but last weekend I watched uh, one Nelson Aguilar not only go up but win a 50-50 ball in the end zone. Like I and saw it was a that. penalty. It was a <laughs> penalty. I was so confused. He, uh, he caught like, a touchdown, and there was a penalty, and he was just like, no. And, and like, it. yeah, and just, you know, uh, just a, a plethora of, of people, former uh, Philadelphians who are on to bigger and better things currently. Uh, but oh, but that's not what we're here to focus on. Not um, Jimmy Butler. We're not talking about Jimmy Butler. Well, right and now. you know what? Uh, Part of me is glad about that, but I am rooting for the Heat. I'm not going to lie. Same. I'm, Who I'm, wants to I'm, see the look, Lakers win? I've always been – Yeah. first off, perfectly put, I can't root for that logo ever, the Lakers. Uh, and secondly, I've always been a, a Jimmy Butler fan, um, and getting him on the Sixers was a dream. Losing him was a nightmare. It's why I still, you know, wave the fire out in brand flag. Um, and, and now his, his you know – for me, he needs to change. Like, like, make me shut up as quick as possible with that. Do some off season moves. Step one, Doc Rivers. Uh, you know, so that's that was a great step one. Um, and, and Doc Rivers is a guy that just brings instant stability to your franchise. If you look at his previous stints, Orlando, uh, like seven years. Boston, eight years. Uh, the clip, the Clippers, an, an organization that can't get out of their own way. He, he turned from garbage to a landing Western spot. Conference. And yeah. and, and, and I've, I've, I'll also say that he's not going to get, at least not right away, I highly doubt he's going to get more talent than he just had. But I, I can't believe the Clippers were so quick to give up on him. And that's why the Clippers are the Clippers and they're always going to be the inferior team in L.A. Uh, and they just they make bad moves like that, and I'm glad that you know again I'm I'm really glad that the Sixers did bring in uh, Doc Rivers. Um, I think I think his his uh, like he he pointed out in his presence his team score, uh, and, and and that's look if that's one thing we were really talking about with this team is just the the lack of creativity when it comes to the Sixers offense. Uh, Greg, you and I have talked time and time again about Tobias Harris. Well. Hey, we are going to end that debate this year, and 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 much like how you you might have to like own up to Joe later in this show, I I might have to own up to you and finally relinquish the like okay I was wrong about Tobias Harris because now you're gonna have uh, Doc Rivers who was very hard on Tobias when they were out there together, and he also knows how to use him in the pick and rolls. Pick, how many times did I say he's not being used correctly? Where's the pick and rolls? Well, now he's gonna have them, and on top of that. You're gonna see Joel and B get used in those pick and rolls. Uh, I'm excited about the the you know potential for this offense. Um, I, I, you just got to get rid of Al Horford. Uh, Bef- that's step one. Before I start about Doc Rivers, let me just state that there are only two types of people that actually want the Lakers to win this series. Two types of people. Mm-hmm. 
Yankees fans and Cowboys fans. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I think the LeBron fact, you're right. And, I, and like for, for Lakers, like fans and generations of all time. But I think like, I think the LeBron factor brings in a little bit. I think people scorned by Jimmy Butler might also be a little bit just on the Philadelphia angle. It's but, the but same yeah, content. The, the, the Lakers fans are the worst. You always see, it, like right now, if you go on ESPN's page, you'll see We Dem Boys, but it'll be a Lakers logo. <laughs> it's the same concept of all these people that now are Bucks fans. They're not fans of the Bucks. Yeah. Who likes the Bucks? No, you like Tom Brady. Like, yeah, it and, became a destination in my, overnight. In my opinion, that's cool. It's like your side team and things like that, you know? Yeah. But, but it should never be your main team. Like, I got laughed off the face of the earth for a decade for loving the Bills as my as my side piece. Yeah. And now I'm and now I'm I'm <clears throat> I'm just reveling in all the filth people threw at me for years. And now I'm like, oh, Josh Allen's better than Carson Wentz. Oh God, it hurts to <laughs> say it out loud. Oh, no, I, I do love Carson Wentz. <laughs> but like the Bills are the real deal finally, and people are like, Oh, you're a bandwagon jumper. Like, have you seen my Twitter in two thousand twelve? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When I, I had could, Bills Mafia. I can attest that uh, I had a Willis McGahee jersey that you for for years like wanted from me. Yeah, uh, my favorite quarterback <laughs> in football at one point in my life was J.P. Lossman. Yeah, that's that doesn't goals. happen to that's the average goals. American. If you're not from Northern 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 New York, you don't even know who J.P. Lossman is. But I love the man. DJ Manuel, let's shout out to go. Jamie and chat too. I see those. I see those War Room Philly logos. Oh my um, goodness gracious! Oh, the emotes, good for you, man. Yeah, That's yeah, it. yeah. Um, but Doc Rivers, <clears throat> Doc Rivers, good hire. And what I was really, really, really excited about is that, as that we'll call it the brass brand and whomever made the mm-hmm. decision on the coach held on D'Antoni. Like I was expecting when he became available, like overnight he's in. And the whole team dynamic has to change because he doesn't type that he doesn't coach the type of team with the type of personnel the Sixers have. And it was going to kind of either set the franchise back a couple of years and kind of rebuild or it was going to get everybody excited to just move on from a lot of different things. And they waited and to bring in Doc Rivers, who I felt like as soon as he became available was the guy. Let's go. Mm-hmm. The type of coach like an Elaine Vigneault who just takes what you have and in the first year, gets you to the playoffs, gets you excited, can and then start kind of building on that. He's the type of coach that instantly, like, gets results, and you don't see that a lot. The Sixers have good pieces. I've said it before; they don't have top five in the East pieces. But to your point, I'm probably on your side about the Elton Brand thing. They have pieces, and that's not something every team can say. So, and basketball is the type of sport where overnight you can go from worst to first. Yeah. It's a very it, with a twelve man <clears throat> roster and uh, people making bad trades to shed salary all the time. It's a it's a sport that you can quickly rise, and I think that this is a really good move in the right direction. Yeah, I mean there was already CP three rumors, which I I don't necessarily love, but if that's my only option to get Al Horford out of town, you would also get Mike Scott out of town on that deal. Just can't have Matisse Thybul in that. that. That was like the one thing I saw in that rumor, and I realized that's like me on Twitter when I'm like, I can't have Sanheim in that deal. Or I guess like Keith, you know, it's like, you got to give the get, well, I, I got to figure out something else other than Matisse Thiebel in that deal. But that's, you know, for a different day. Joe says, I'm 100% on with the Sixers now. All right. It's a, uh, they finally, I'm still not, I'm and, still super casual. Uh, oh yeah. I mean, look, I'm, I'm going to have to, uh, uh, I mean, I'm always on board cause it's a Philadelphia thing, but yeah, as far as like, I'm not waving the flag, trust the process. Like, you know, I still got yeah. the the Joel Embiid, uh, you know, right here. But it's it, I'm it's it's a wait and see. And here's the, the the like little bow that I'll put on everything. And and ideally everything goes right. We have you know like Joe says we got someone that's going to use Embiid properly. Kind of mentioned the same thing. He'll be used in the pick and rolls, um, much like Tobias Harris. And these guys are going to have much more of a creative uh, flow in, offensively now. Um, you have someone that. If he says, all right, Simmons has got to go. All right, Embiid's got to go. I trust him. You know, I, I trust that much more than, you know, m- maybe a Brett Brown who couldn't handle Jimmy Butler or, or you know, and, and couldn't, didn't want to deal with J.J. Redick because, you know, he, he didn't play defense. And it's like, I'm willing to take Doc Rivers' NBA acumen uh, a little more and I'll trust his, his word, if you will. 
It's a shame that Jimmy and JJ are both gone, though, and there's nothing you could really do about that. No. You and and, see and what Doc can do with the 2018 Sixers, the 2019 uh, Sixers. He wins the championship. He really does. You know, maybe not that year. At least he gets there. But if he keeps if he keeps that team together, they're they're there right now in the finals, losing to the Lakers and and probably probably competing heavily. Now he wasn't Here. he wasn't available, so we do have to you know consider that. And hey, while we all wanted Brett Brown gone, maybe that year. Now obviously the roster problems is a different thing, but. We're getting Doc Rivers now, and I'm not sure that we would have got a better coach last year. Um, but we would have I'm not, roster. I'm not all over Sixers Twitter, right? Like, that's mm-hmm. the last place I go. I'm on Union Twitter more than I'm on Sixers Twitter. So I don't know if this is a thing or if it's not a thing or if I'm making a thing out of nothing. But I don't remember hearing a lot of talk of, is Brett Brown going to land another job somewhere? And I think that's an interesting thought. Is Does he become an assistant somewhere and try to build up his resume again to eventually get another coaching spot? Or is he just kind of out? Like, what do you think? Uh, I would I would say either the latter, uh, become an assistant. I haven't heard anything as far as Brett Brown rumors. Um, and, and, you know, you heard Dan, like you heard these upper echelon coaches when they were available, you heard rumors immediately. Um, I haven't heard the Brett Brown thing. Maybe he go. maybe one of these new staffs. I would say he's probably going to be an assistant again next year. Um, my other thing would be maybe broadcasting. I would love that Boston accent uh, or that heavy Massachusetts accent that he has uh, on as a color analyst or just on TV. Um, I think he's I think he's a good basketball mind. I really do. I just think he got too hung up on the analytics, and I think that you know his his voice just wore thin. Um, so. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's on a staff. Yeah. Just building building back up. I mean, like, <clears throat> what's the harm? He's a, if he's a good basketball mind and he's he's hell man. He he sat through a lot of he weighed through a lot of crap in Philly and he kind I won't say he got dealt an unfair hand because I don't think he was the right coach to get them over the hump, but he was here for a lot of dark years and yeah. if that doesn't buy you some reputation in the game, I I don't know what does. It, he took that if you want to tell it like it is, he took that team from worst to first. He did. Whether it was sustainable or whether it was all him is, is another argument. And whether he didn't do enough to get him over the top, that's evident. But he still technically took the worst team in basketball history or close to it to the playoffs in just, what, one or two years. So, yeah. you know, it's that's still it, something to he sta- pat on back. He stabilized this organization. Just like we were talking, you know, Doc Rivers brings st- stability hopefully in a more, you know, playoff kind of way. But, I mean, the Sixers – Look, they were, they were, we all knew what they were before the process. And he kind of, you know, he gave us hope between him and the front office and everything. So, you know. Until they wanted to build another stadium at Penn's Landing or whatever. Like, Hey, man, I'm all down. I'm I'm all, I'm all about another, uh, another venue in the city. But Uh, yeah, but like far away from the other ones, the best thing about our city is that they're all. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. But at some point. You know, let's 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 the union. They play in Chester. You don't want to go have season tickets in Chester. Watch some games in the water. I'd rather some on the Penn's Landing. I'd rather watch the union (laughs) Penn's Landing waterfront than Chester. It's the same waterfront. It's the same damn body of water. One's further. (laughs) It's just a little bit more south. It's further. It's like one. It's one more exit down 95. Uh, But (laughs) (laughs) yep, you got me on that one. Uh, The thing is doing double duty. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I, maybe it's just I don't want to go to a union game. No. <laughs> um, They're so fun live. It's awesome. I, I you know, I've seen that atmosphere, and it's uh, I I would imagine it is. Yeah. You know, it's a no. different. Yo, can you imagine a, a world where you're at a sporting event with no whistles, with no pauses, with no timeouts? The clock just runs, yeah. and you get 17 minutes, and then it just runs again. It flies by, and the whole time everybody's just chanting and singing, and uh, dude, soccer games. Mi- Go to a live one. I don't think it'll completely change your perspective, but I think you'll have a little. I bit did more Rocket there. League live. That was dope. That's kind of soccer. Totally, it's kind of soccer. <laughs> totally. Um, but yeah, I did. I was at. I was at the. Uh, I got the lanyard right up behind camera. It was uh, RLCS nine in two thousand nineteen. When back when we could go to live events. Um, but wow. yeah, that's that. Look, uh, I'm not like I'm not one of those persons that's like itching to go to bars or go to to to, to like. Uh, the, nah, I'm all the, set. The, the the movie theaters or any of those things, but like 
live events, sporting events, and like concerts. Oh yeah, I miss it. I literally <laughs> bought an 85 inch TV, so I never have to do that. Uh, yeah, look, like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not that. in a, I'm not in a rush. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but I do miss it. I do miss yeah. it. Um, but you know, uh, trying to just transition from one front office to another. Uh, we had a Philly season and uh like that it's over you know just like that for real and and it's like i i didn't i I don't know i didn't think a 60 game season would feel that fast man it went fast because every game mattered too like that's the hard part we packed roughly 200 games of sadness into 60 games like (laughs) could you imagine could you imagine imagine if this if this bullpen had to pitch 162. I'm. I th- count my lucky stars every night that I only had to watch 60 games of this crap because, <laughs> like, it, they subjected us to so much pain and so much hurt that I felt like the season was 162. But you wake up and it's over and it's gone and now the Marlins are playing in the playoffs and life is on its edge. I don't know what's up, what's down. All I know is that the Phillies made the right move got rid of the general manager that set the franchise back after five years of fledgling drafts and unbelievably crappy free agent signings. I don't know who's going to lead it next, but I'm just very glad it's not Matt Clinton. Uh, if it's, uh, is his, his name's uh, Ned Rice, right? The, the interim GM right now. Yes. Um, if it's him and Andy McPhail is still here. What He's only got one year left on his deal though. McPhail's Mc- gone after next year. But, is that enough reason to keep him this year? Uh, Even though he, think, like, what does he do? I get it. but like, So Middleton's, this is the only thing I can think of. It's explain like this to me, Greg. Explain privileged it, old Explain dudes. it to me like I'm five. It, it's pr- <laughs> okay, so it's privileged old people, right? Like, <laughs> McPhail's been in baseball for 40 years. That's almost 80 years. So then Middleton, he's owned a baseball team forever. They've been at the same kind of point of front offices for a long, long time. They've known each other for a really long time. They, he clearly, for whatever reason, likes what McPhail does to the business side. He's now said McPhail's going to have a hand in the baseball side, which petrifies me. But, like, if me and you were, like, we've been friends for 20 years, right? If you told me, yeah, I'm going to go out the pasture next year, would I fire you? No, I would let you live out your last year, and then I'd let you go on your merry way. It's just one more year. If I, I guarantee you if there was more than one year left on his contract, then it, he would have been gone. I guarantee you that. But it's just a friend doing a friend a solid because I personally think that the only way to make this Phillies franchise whole and to get it back on the right foot is to not just hire a general manager and let McPhail be the president for a year and then have to go find another one. I can see a world where Ned Rice is the GM for the next year. McPhail, I'm sorry, uh, Middleton sits on that. They both kind of see their way out of it after next season, and he brings in an Eric Neander, or he brings in a Theo Epstein if Epstein's indeed done with the Cubs. Like there are, you don't just bring in a general manager at this point. You need a young, exciting, sexy, half analytics, half kind of baseball eye kind of guy with success. With I only want somebody who's been with the Rays, the A's. The Yankees, the Indians, like that's it. And then Theo, like I don't want the Angels and Orioles and all these teams that we picked from because that they don't have winning franchises. So you sit on that. You give the keys to the castle to Eric Neander next season, who right now is the general manager of the race, the best franchise in baseball. And you say, here you go. That's the only way he leaves Tampa if you give him the president job or Theo. Hey, you're kind of done in Chicago. You brought them a title. You've had a great run of whatever, seven, eight years. Come to Philly. You can be the president. You can be the the vice president of, you know, the president of baseball operations, the GM, and hire your own staff and whatever, and you do that. So I can see a world where we wait a long time to figure out who the next GM is going to be. Yeah, and and while some of that sounded really good, the Theos and, you know, is there a world where we can do a little bit of both and and instead of waiting until next year i get i get maybe theo epstein might not be on it but like you can't go out there and get someone from the a's or the rays even if it's not the top dog and and but but you can because you could just move mcphail to a new position 
just say, hey, you're not the president anymore, yeah, but you're the yeah. you're the you're the vice president with special privileges or whatever baseball title is made up. So you can say, hey, Eric Neander, here's the keys to the <clears> castle. You're the president of baseball operations and the general manager. And Andy McPhail is going to be like what Pat Gillick was when he came back. Just kind of the figurehead to oversee some things, to hold his year-end press conference where he talks out of his ass, and we just kind of hate him for 365 more days, and he goes on his merry way and retires. So, yeah, I, I can see that world. The problem is if you wait and you don't do what you just proposed of kind of figuring it out and you do wait a year, that's another year of Bryce Harper's prime that's wasted. Yeah. Now he'll be, That's his age 28 He's, season. Honestly, that's that's number one on my mind. It's it, it's Aaron Nola, it's it's Zach Wheeler, it's all of this this young core. It's just a year older, and I don't want to waste next year. The Mets, Steve Cohen is a already the the most uh, the richest baseball owner in the sport. Just just by owning that franchise, he is already the the world the uh, the league's richest owner. You never know what he's going to do in his first off season. The Nationals are in a free fall. The Marlins, I don't believe in them over 162 games. You saw how bad of a second half they had. They just started 10-1, and one, so it got them in. I don't believe in them. This is our time to compete with the Braves and to be a second-place franchise, which, quite frankly, on most seasons will get you in in a wild-card spot. This is our time, and we're going to waste it, and that, to me, is a freaking travesty. Yeah, and I'm glad you put it that way because, again, with, with everything going on in this front office right now, it's just like – Man, I really just want to feel even a little bit like how I felt when the Sixers got Doc Rivers. Like, I never got to feel even a little because Mc, er, McPhail is still here. Clentac didn't even get fired. We really didn't even get blood. That was a joke. At was best, joke. we got a paper cut. And it's like, come on, man. We just watched three September collapses. We've had five bad years of baseball. Uh, uh, maybe we've had eight. Even, we've had even, eight. Yeah, I was gonna say more than that, but it's you know under under specifically under this regime, if I'm not mistaken, or if it was more, you know, correct me. But uh, it, it's just like this team, even before they just where who are they drafting? Where are they getting these picks from? Uh, it, it's insane. Um, the fact you had that. The fact that you got J T. Real Muto and day one re-signing him wasn't you know, wasn't priority number one. You have to make the trade with the, the, with the contract already in mind. You yeah, get exactly. permission to talk to his agent before you make the trade, just like the Johan Santana deal back in 2007 with the Mets. You work out the extension before you make the trade, and then you make the trade. How that wasn't a thing blows my mind. He never should have stepped to the freaking press conference without a brand new contract in hand, a six-year deal, because then he would only have, what, what, but, well, no, I guess he'd have all six left on it. But still, point being, like, you don't do that. And you never, ever, ever admit after you let the guy step down that I wouldn't have approved the trade if I didn't think we'd re-sign him. You own the team. Yeah. You He signed Bryce. Go sign JT if you want to. It's your money, yeah. John. <laughs> I mean, it, it baffles my mind why he needs a GM to do that. Call his agent. Say, what do you want? I want to be the richest catcher in history. Okay, here you go. Here's $24 million a year over six. That If that doesn't get the job done, I don't want him. Yes, I don't want him. That's, that's what we did with, uh, with, with Ray Halliday, which is uh, from chat. Um, we, you know, we, we did that kind of where we got him and we, we made the, you know, the, the contract before we even brought him in. And that um, was Ruben, the yeah, dumbest yeah. GM we've yeah. ever had. And that's uh, Philly. That's Nick, right? And if I'm if I'm remembering, I know you, you got a name change uh, from from chat. And I think that's it's either Nick or Rob. Um, but yeah, I'm, it, I'm, it just my, boggles my Nick. mind, man. Uh, like I miss I miss Ed Wade. He knew how to draft. I mean, Ed Wade for all the things he did wrong, he knew how to draft. He knew how to draft. And you have right now, yeah. Alec Bohm's a superstar already. Yep. He's a stud. Thank you. You you swung and you hit a grand slam with that pick at three overall. But when you had the eighth pick, you had Adam Hazley. When you had the one pick, you had Mickey Moniak. Uh, let's not forget that Joe Girardi, for whatever reason, will not hit Adam Hazley against left-handed pitching, even though he does well. Adam Hazley could be a good player if you just give him an everyday shot. To me, he's more of a corner outfielder, and that's tough right now with Kutch in left and Bryce in right. But Mickey Moniak, like, oof. Your one and eight picks are both hopefully going to be fourth outfielders. Yeah. That is not and, how and you And they're, they're like, 
they're bland fourth outfielders too. You know, they're. I like I like, like Hazley, and I think Moniac's so got like, potential. Here's the thing. But... Here's when I say bland. Like uh, I don't mean it necessarily in 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 too bad of a way, but like Hazley, he's not a speed guy. He's not a power guy. Like they don't give you one. For me, especially out of my outfield, I like them to have either speed or power. Um, so you like Roman Quinn? N- no. <laughs> He's terrible. No, I hate Roman Quinn, but he at least offers a tool. Um, he but, does. But he no, does. if you're a, asking, a very very good. If team. but but seriously, I'm I'm starting Adam Hazley almost every day over Roman Quinn. Uh, yeah. Like because Roman Quinn because is my even, is my pinch, because my pinch even hunter. with my philosophy, I'm able to use my eyes and game sense and adjust my philosophy according. What a concept! Roman Gunnelly, Quinn is, he, is is never playing the outfield for me. He's a yeah, terrible he's, center he fielder. Can't, he he can't read a fly ball. He can't hit. Uh, but the problem with having a specialized pinch runner like him in, an, in a league where the DH is going to be available, it's very tough to use that because yeah, you have it, to then pull somebody from the game. It's not like he can just run for the pitcher when they get on or pinch hit for a pitcher. It's very difficult to have that one tool guy on your bench, especially when that one tool is speed. So, like, you know, listen, the Phillies have 65 ish million dollars coming off this year with Jake and Robertson and Hunter, they could potentially non-tender Morgan and Velasquez and even Naris and Phelps, even though I wouldn't, I would keep them around. They are solid building blocks for a decent bullpen. But for, I said this on Twitter, I got half roasted and I actually got a lot of support more than I thought is, is what I would do with that money is guess what? I probably, I'm, I'm not signing JT Romuto anymore. I think that that for me, as somebody who's written about, watched every game, as a lifelong Phillies guy, tattoos on the leg, all that good stuff, I think I'm past it. I think I've made peace with the Sixto trade. I, I just kind of hope his elbow hurts after a while. I, I've made peace with the Sixto trade I because I just I do not want to overpay for a catcher who we could say in three years, well, you know what, we've got the DH. You don't pay a DH $25 million unless his name's David Ortiz. JT Romuto is an average MLB bat. Let's just face it. He's not a cleanup hitter like he was this past season. He sucks with runners in scoring position and the bases loaded. He cannot get a big hit. He gets, like, uh, don't get me started on all the times JT has come up short in those tough situations. He is an elite bat for a catcher. He is the best defensive catcher in the game. Did Buster Posey's contract work out? No. Did Joe Mowers? No, he was a first baseman a year after he signed it. So I don't want to overpay for JT. What I do want to do is bring back Didi Gregorius for two years until Bryson Stott is ready. Because I do believe Bryson Stott was a good draft pick, by the way. But I want I want that. I want Didi Gregorius back. That's going to cost you, what, $10 million less? Maybe 8 to $10 million less then you would bring back JT. So now that $8 million, I'm going out and I'm getting a bullpen piece. So that's 23 to $25 million. I still have $40 million to play with. I'm getting George Springer or Trevor Bauer. I'm getting one of the big fish and bringing them in to solidify my rotation or my outfield, which center field is a glaring need for this team. Center that's field one. Is, to me, the, the center field issue is just as glaring as the bullpen, if not more, because it's one position. And, and like, you're splitting you, Quinn and how Hazley. How do you ignore that? Posi- like, they went into this season with that in mind. Quinn yeah. and Hazley. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, so then give me James McCann behind the plate, split time with Andrew Knapp. I'm fine with that. I, I've made peace with that. I go haven't. get me Mark. I, I got to go say, I got to be honest. I haven't. Go, <laughs> go get me Marcus Stroman. Go get me another starter. I, I'd be fine with that. Like, as long as they don't do this. Yeah. We're going to save that money this year because oof, we just haven't been allowed fans and we've lost so much money. And, and I'm it, only worth $3.4 billion, guys. As long as they don't just eat it and don't do anything, which I could seriously see based on Middleton's comments, you know, it's going to be an interesting offseason to say the least. And I, and I do think there's still potential for a trade. I just don't know if the, you know, if Mickey Moniak's five game audition was enough to, to, entice another team to take the flyer so yeah. it's it's a lot ask mookie Betts how covid's uh, affected his contract situation ask the dodgers 
Andrew Friedman is was a Rays guy. That he he was the GM of the Rays. And guess what the Dodgers did? They said, "Here's all the money. Here's all the keys to all the castles. Just run our franchise." And guess what? The Dodgers have been a perennial uh, player and a powerhouse in the National League since 2007. Now they haven't won one, but they're gonna this year. So, what do you want? Like. They're going to get their ring this year, finally. I Dodgers Rays, the best World Series I could ever imagine. Can't wait. Like, super psyched on that. Uh, so, like, the, the the Dodgers did it right. They have Dustin May and Gonsolin and D- Gavin Lux. They don't know if they even want to play him, and he'd be the Phillies' second best prospect. Mm-hmm. Like, that, if that, the Phillies have the second longest playoff drought in all of Major League Baseball, just ahead of the Mariners. What are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. Well, look, here, here's the thing. You can't draft. Well, guess what? It's time to spend money. You're going to have to do most of those moves you said or something close to it and the JT. Like, you, you, yeah. you, it, in my opinion, look, I'm, You don't want to do, You say it now because you gave up a lot for him and he's the, the best catcher at this time. I, but the last two seasons he's been hurt. He missed 11 games out of a 60-game season, came back way too early, cost the team from that perspective because he couldn't hit. Like, why would you want to give a catcher... 23 plus million dollars because baseball doesn't have a salary cap but they have guaranteed contracts (laughs) and and owners that still need to pay it but he's a billionaire like you realize so what he he hasn't flexed yet here's the thing and i said it as soon as they sign bryce harper's contract you can no longer worry about the luxury tax and guess what he is and this team is screwed because of it that's right so if you need to worry about the luxury tax no i don't you as the but you, but you kind of do. Like we're. I mean, I have to. I money. have to deal with it, but I don't have to accept right. it. I'm gonna bitch there, there about you it go. all the, you as go. much as I want. Are you kidding me? No, no, you're right. You're right. You have to deal with it. But he's the one that said it. we're gonna spend stupid money, and instead, all he's done is spend money stupidly. But you, this is the same guy that said I'll die before I, you know, to bring a championship back here. I'll die. I'll well, die. I'm about I'll, to kill then, him, so he, he might fall on that sword. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> th- th- everything this guy has said has been BS. Everything. Exactly, and that's and that's so, and that's why. Look, in in my opinion, there's forget on on the field all this. The there is a dark cloud over Citizens Bank right now, and it's called ownership. Uh, and and this ownership is feeding us bullshit, and and we're just taking it. We're going we're one. Well, it's all we're going to spend stupid money, so that way we all go out and we all buy our Bryce Harper and our JT Real Muto T-shirts, and we all fill the stadium. And, and then oh now now and it's the like stadium a little... wasn't even filled in August of 2019 when they were in a, a playoff hunt. In, in the first year Bryce Harper's here, that place wasn't selling because out. We because already, baseball isn't what it was but we in But we also already smelled the pile of bullshit that he was feeding us. I don't disagree. I think John Middleton's a fraud, 100%. And yes, I do I think not, all of Philadelphia now realizes that, to be honest with you. I absolutely agree. And am I of the philosophy that you don't sign Bryce Harper to $26 million a year over 13 years to not build around them? I would I would give my left you know what to be able to to just spend stupid Keyboard. money and do all that. I absolutely I would do that. <laughs> but I know the way this front office operates and all Bryce Harper signing was was to get asses in seats and sell merchandise and get him sponsorships and all the things that come along with that. The face of baseball. You have a chance to bring in the number one most marketable player into your city. You're going to do it at all costs because it's already paid for itself. So the whole I'm going to surround him with all the talent we need to do to win. John, why'd you make the JT trade if you didn't sign him before he even stepped to the podium? Yeah, he's, that, that's when you sign him. He seems to think that he can win in year 10 through 13 of the Price Harper contract and everything will We're be gonna, fine. Oh, and, sorry. And, and, We're going to hate that contract. We're going to hate that contract. Well, and in that's seven, eight because it was all predicated on winning now. Now, right. <laughs> and guess what? We all said if we'll trade a decade of losing for a World Series. We did that. We won the World Series. Dude, it's think about how the Phillies dynasty crumbled in front of our faces. They win the I wild card and to, get but, they win the wild I, card and get swept. <laughs> the next year they win the World Series. Then from there they literally went a step down every year. Then they lost in the NLCS, then in the DS. Then they just uh then I think they lost again in the DS to the Cardinals, I think, that one year. Then they missed the playoffs. And then they became the worst team in baseball. Like, 
all of that happened in a gradual way down. And now you try to climb back up. And what do you say? We're waiting for this offseason. We're going to get one of the two fish. And you do. And you actually traded for D- JT before you signed Bryce. They got JT a month before they – or no, about two to three weeks before they we signed Bryce We thought Clintac was a god. He got rid of Carlos Santana, got Gene <laughs> Segura in that deal. Like we, we were like, this man is, is a Greek god. Yeah, and, signed five All Stars in that, one offseason, and then that was it. Like, that's all he did. That's literally the entire time he was here. That's the only good he did. You know, you signed Jake Arrieta to seventy-five million dollars after spring training starts when nobody else wanted him. You give him twenty-five million dollars a year, and he gave us what eight million dollars of worth total across three years. You know, and I love Jake Arrieta too. So like, I. It, Pains me to hate yeah, that. Yeah, I, I was timing. I was in that boat too. Hey, sometimes you gotta admit. Look, us as fans, we can afford to get a move wrong, right? It's for the general managers to have. They're the ones with all the scouting that get paid to make the moves. So the, like, the, I never like the fan excuse. Oh, I liked that move, so I let him off the hook. It's like eh, that, to, to an extent, cr- you're right, but eh. the hard part about baseball it's it's arguably the most difficult sport to get right. You have 40 rounds of a draft, which I can see now coming down drastically now that they're kind of cutting minor league franchises and we just had like a five round draft this year. So like I can see that, uh, but it's still the hardest sport to, to get right. And it's arguably the hardest sport to make the pros in. So and then you have to play for six years before you really get paid. And I think that might even change come the next CBA. But it is a really difficult thing to know. Is Mick Abel this year, who I think was a stud and a lock at 15, couldn't miss awesome starting pitcher is he really like do we really know what mick abel is a high school arm out of the west coast of the united states we've never seen before all i saw were youtube videos so what do i know you know so like for matt clintack to have such a bad eye for talent a piss poor there was a reason gene segura has played on four teams in four years before coming here like there's a reason that everybody was trading him around the sun there's a reason you had to get rid of carlos santana's contract but then all of a sudden he goes to cleveland and gets back to being successful and everybody's talking about Fortnite in the clubhouse like you have no idea how to build a cohesive roster when he came here he said he's going to build and i quote waves and waves of pitching what was that you drafted aaron nola Wrong. He, he was the year before you. You know got what he it. did? He went to the same store that the Eagles got the quarterback factory from. <laughs> it was like, what did he do for pitching? Nothing. Nothing. They haven't drafted and developed a pitcher since Aaron Nola. And you might say, well, he's our current ace. That was 2014. <laughs> Greg, our scouting team only watches YouTube videos as well. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. Nick. That's a good one, Nick. Uh, Jake Arrieta was garbage from the beginning. You're you're right, Joe. You're right. And he, he also says, did I miss my crowning moment? Which I No, was, save that till the end. <laughs> we'll save that till the uh, but, end. But yeah, you know, hey, and and while we're talking YouTube, I mean, all I watched was a few YouTube videos of J.J. Ortega Whiteside, and I knew from just like that that he was garbage. <laughs> I, I mean, and like same thing with, with Matisse for, for basketball. I know we're flopping around right now, but sometimes you can just watch YouTube videos. and You know what? I think this guy's it. Um, uh, but, but yeah, you, to Greg's point, uh, much harder to get a, especially baseball. He's like, what are you watching? Like you're watching edited clips of his like best stuff and not like him wild all over. You know, like, I just got heated again. I just got I heated just, just <laughs> thinking, I just got heated thinking about this. This is the same guy who traded Connor Seabold and Nick Pavetta oh, for yeah, Brandon this, this, Workman this year. and Heath Hembry just to stay under the luxury tax. You threw in Connor Seabold, who very well could be a fourth or fifth starter on this team in a year or two, just so you could stay under the luxury tax, just to bring in the two worst acquisitions in the history of the team. It was the worst trade, even though you got rid of Pavetta, who, by the way, dominated in two starts for the Red Sox. You gave away Connor Seabold to get the two worst relievers you have ever traded. But give me – where's Clay Condry? Where's Real Cormier? Yeah. Give me these JC guys. Real, um, Utah, or Rio, J.C. Romero's. J.C. Romero's. <laughs> like, give uh, – yeah, the, 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 the Chad there's, Durbins, there's, the Scott Ayers, the J.C. Romero's I mean, the Matt the Sta- oh, I guess Matt Stairs, you say you got the Jay Bruce. Like, he has made – Jay Bruce, that was a good trade. Yeah, a good trade. like he's he, – look, he's – He's not the worst general manager I've ever seen, but it's no, he is. it's it's <laughs> but it's it's the minutia, it's the things that good GMs do. He failed on, 
Anybody can yeah. go out and make the easy trades, sign Bryce Harper, do the easy things, get the All Stars. But he, what, he where found- was Klentak, this analytics genius, when the Pirates were selling Tyler Glass now in Austin Meadows? They gave up Chris Archer. The Rays gave up Chris Archer, who everybody and their mother knew was a strikeout pitcher with arm problems who was going to give you a 5 ERA and you were trying to get upside to get him in the National League. You gave up Tyler Glass now, who has the nastiest stuff in baseball. I said it. And you gave up Austin Meadows, who just hits bombs. He does nothing but hit bombs. Like, that's what the Rays did. They saw the potential because of their team saying, hey, let's look at the one thing these guys do. And let's build on that instead of our team saying he needs to have five tools or he needs to have this or he needs to throw a high fastball or he needs. No, get a guy in here who throws 99 miles an F an hour and let's just build on that. That's why I think Connor Brogdon was finally a good thing for this team. That guy is our future closer. And I'm I'm dying on that hill. Yeah, I, 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 I even said, look, he had a rough start and I was like, just wait, just wait, he'll bounce back. I think towards the end of the year, we saw he, he was, you know, a, a rep. He struck piece. out his last eight hitters. What you, of course, yeah, he's yeah. great. Um, so I, I'm right there with you. That's a kid that watched him pitch. I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that stuff. Uh, yeah, because you're used to our guys throwing 89. I also pen. did that with Vince Velasquez. Just to, just to, <laughs> just to you know, I got to get yeah. for, for when I'm right. I also like to give out when I'm wrong. Just to, to yeah. keep things, just to keep things Thanos. Um, yeah. But, but, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's just... For me, this team, Matt, more specifically, Matt Klintak's biggest failure um, is just the the lack of drafting over over the years, and it, it's just it's crippled this team. I mean, think about the end of this year. You're you're trotting out bullpen games in in a in a pennant race, or you know not a pen, but like in a in a race for the division or a, the, the, the the a playoff spot, and yeah. and you're trotting you're trotting out bullpen stuff and Vince Velasquez and. You don't have anybody in the wings that can go out there and give you four, not even they five. They did. Like, they 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 gave Adonis Medina a shot, but they gave it to him too late. Yeah. He pitched in one of the last games of the season. He pitched decently. He couldn't find the strike zone, but he pitched decently in four innings against the Blue Jays. But, like, where was that two weeks before instead yeah, of starting exactly. David Hale yeah, in a bullpen game or Heath Embry? Like, give me a hey, break. And while we're on it, look <laughs> – Joe Girardi did not have a good season this year. He is still the right manager for this team. Oh, he is a he is a building block. Absolutely. Uh, just I just you know, it's. Weird I wouldn't want to be him. I wouldn't want to have to manage that bullpen. It was a bad bullpen. I'm not. I'm giving him all of the excuses. I'm not mad at him, but I just feel like in all in all, in just fairness, there was look Reese batting two steady. I hate it. Can't I'm sorry. stand it. He's that's bone look, spot. I that's I understand spot. that that analytics and that's fine. Reese Hoskins isn't your best hitter on this team. Reese Hoskins is a four, five, maybe even a six hole hitter. Uh, yeah. He is not a two hole hitter, not with those giraffe legs that he has. He clogs up the bases. Give, give, if, give if, me Alec Bohm all if, day. If he's on on the two hole, you have to hit a home run to get him in. You're so putting stress on Bryce Harper, JT, whoever your three, four hitters are, to, to hit a home run because he's on first. So. Yeah, it, it's he's not a two hole hitter. That's on Girardi. Now, if that all of a sudden changes next year, we never see him in a two. Like maybe then we can try to blame that on Clintac, Clintac's analytics or whatever. Nah, but, I don't think Clintac went into the room and was like, "Hey, Joe, you got to listen to me." Because remember, think... we heard that. We heard that with Gabe. We heard, "Oh, it's Clintac's putting in these lineups." We heard things like that, and and there were a, there were not a lot, but a, a loud minority saying Clintac needs to be fired, not Gabe Kapler. Uh, well, Most in all people fairness, wanted Reese, everyone. But... Reese hit Reese hit two under Gabe a lot too. I don't think a lot of people remember that they think no, he's yeah, the four hitter the whole time. No, he hit and two that's why a, a I, I hated Gabe's Gabe. lineups too, and that's why I was like, is it still his lineups? Yeah, yeah I, I, I couldn't listen. Say when Reese got hurt, you moved Bohm there, and it worked. Don't f with that. Move Reese to five. Reese would be the best five hole hitter we've had in close to a yes. decade. I'm fine with that. Since you Jason put Bohm at two. You have I you gotta find a leadoff hitter because I'm sorry, Kutch ain't it. No, Kutch at no. Kutch in seven would be insane. If Scott Kingry, the guy they gave six years and twenty four million dollars to man, before contact. he saw a major league pitch, <laughs> if he would work out, man, what an awesome leadoff hitter he could be. Or Adam Hazley. I actually don't mind Hazley in the leadoff spot. And then you have Hazley, boom, Harper. I hate that, but Romuto. Then think about that. Like then Reese at five. Dude, Didi at six. Didi at six every night. What a lineup. That lineup is fierce. And let's not forget, the Phillies make the playoffs if Reese and JT don't get hurt. Do you... It's just that simple. 
you said DD at two years. Does that does that uh, does his age concern you at all? No, no that I don't, no two year contract will ever hurt me. Okay. Like a one year contract, there is no such thing as a bad one year contract. There is almost no such thing as a bad two year contract. That's even fair. Robertson, even Robertson, who who I don't know if he'll ever pitch in the majors again, at least at the level close to what he was. He doesn't have a third year. Can you imagine twenty million dollars on David Robertson yeah. next year again? Yeah. Like that's insane to think about. Two years. Listen, he pitched five innings for us and never pitched again. We gave him his forty million or whatever we gave him. But two years, he's off of our books. I am. I would love Didi at, at two years thirty. Oh my gosh, two years thirty three. I'd probably go there. That would be insanely good value because then you have Bryson Stott ready to roll. Uh, and come up in 2023. So, like, that would be awesome for me. Is Segura still in the books? Yeah, he's got, like, three or four more years left. He's so do you trade player. him? He's your third base. He's your third baseman. He's untradeable. This is a guy that was hitting 330 before he came here. Now he cracks 265 if he's lucky. And, he, you know, his defense at third was really good. I'll give him that. And Jimmy Siggs, and he lost all the weight and all that stuff. The guy... I don't know what the hell happened, but he can't hit for average anymore, which is what we brought him in to do was well, to hit second. Can I make one suggestion? Yeah, of course. What happened, in my opinion, and maybe maybe this is, you know, he was steady in that two hole when he was succeeding. Andrew yep. McCutcheon went down. They moved him yep. up to the one. They started moving him back down. They never really steady put him in the two hole, which is, again, another reason why I was screaming about Reese Hoskins all year. Because, honestly... Why not just try Segura in the two hole? See and if then it works. Boom, boom three, Harper four. See if it works. You know what I mean? Because you got he was arguably one of the best two hole hitters in the game when you had him locked in there, and then everything fell apart. Um, both I, with I this lineup hate, and, and with him. I, I wouldn't hate Segura, Boom, Harper. You know, but here's Hoskins. Here's the thing. I, hate I don't want Segura as my third baseman. Um, and I guess if you're putting Bohm in at third, I can live with him at second. Uh, maybe oh, trade who, Kingery. So, um, so who else? I'm just. I mean, looking, he could play short again. I'm if looking DD to like, come back. I'm but. looking to maximize something. I, I'm okay with DD coming back, but if DD comes back, I gotta trade Segura or I gotta trade Kingery, and I gotta start. I gotta start maximizing some some you know it's, some pieces. It's easier said than done, though. Like. Who get, wants to pay me, beans? You're going to have to eat that money. You're get me in the office. I, I'm money. trying to make something happen. Second <laughs> baseman available. Second Hoskins baseman back available. Next, or I trade, or I trade uh, Reese Hoskins maybe. Yeah, I, that's, that's, that's a possibility. Look, The guy I'll, just had Tommy John surgery. He's out for six months. You yeah, yeah, he's him. at his lowest. Yeah, you're right. I tra- Listen. It's, it's a deadline deal at best. I, I am – I'm looking through the free agent list. I don't think – I, don't, I can't believe that DJ LeMay, who's a free agent again, I would think the Yankees have locked him up. But if he's not, I'm giving him all the money. Uh, Jonathan VR is decent. Uh, but, like, dude, Colton Wong, he's got a club option. Neil Walker, Jonathan Shope, Jerickson Profar, Joe Panic, Chris Owens, Tommy LaStella, Cesar Hernandez, Josh Harrison, D. Gordon, uh, Freddie Galvis. Like, that's, that's who's available. So, like – I'd rather go to bat with Gene. Than, I, I don't want to trade him if that's the other options I have. I don't have a second baseman waiting in the wings. The Phillies' prospects are dry. I don't know, man. It's tough. Um, I'm gonna, we'll do. Yeah, we let's, just wanna, let's, I wanna, we got I wanna, like 20 minutes. I know. So I was just going to say, I want to wrap it up. I'm just, I'll read Nick's comments. Segura, Bohm, Harper, Hoskins, D.D. Kutch. I'm guessing that's that's a lineup. It's a good lineup, dude. Um, it's yeah, a good that's, freaking that's a good, lineup. Good possibility. Um, but, yeah, we, we want to talk uh, some Eagles. Uh, it, it's, it's just funny how – this city right now, we're so willing to talk anything but the Eagles, which is something I've never seen in my life. Um, but, hey, here we are in first place, two of all things. They don't want to talk about the first place NFL or NFC East, uh, Philadelphia Eagles. But, um, Greg, we haven't had you on all season. What do you see with this team? What's good and what's bad? So... Is it like a coincidence that I traded for Carson Wentz in fantasy the week before we get the win? Is that a coincidence? Ugh, I don't you, think you so. You bought low? You bought low on Carson? I I paid Philip Rivers <laughs> and I can't even I got OBJ I thought, Carson Wentz. <laughs> oh, all right, here's what it was. It was OBJ Carson Wentz and Noah Fant and I got uh I gave away Cooper Rivers and Hunter Henry. So I feel like I I've, I've won that trade hands down. So uh, Carson Wentz, I still believe, while I gave my first 
itch of doubt when in the Rams game of this guy might not be our future, you know, quarterback, our franchise quarterback. I I still believe he's our franchise quarterback. <laughs> there is no denying he has accuracy issues. There's no denying some of the throws are maddening. But so was Donovan. Donovan had injury issues too. And there was just something about him that that was bigger than that. And I think Carson Wentz has that. He needs a little bit more touch on his deep ball. He finally threw a good one to Fulgham. I thought he was going to drop that ball. He almost did. But, you know, Travis Fulgham and uh, the linebacker (laughs) and Philly Jesus saved the season. Um, Yeah, unlike Aguilar. (laughs) And so, like, that type of win against the defending NFC champs, hurt or not, so are the Eagles. On the road. I don't want to hear. Look, for as much as I say Eagles fans, we can't use excuses as like an or injuries as an excuse. I don't want to hear any opponent being like, oh, well, we have an injury. So we, yeah. Nah, son. We've been dealing with that since the, since the Super Bowl season. And, <laughs> uh, to, and to be fair, uh, you know, listen, it was on the road. 12 million people watched that game. Like, that's a big stage. And for you to take that, that's rough. And now you got Pittsburgh coming in. You got Baltimore. You got the Giants and then the Cowboys. Like, Though that's a, and then right in the middle of that, you have New Orleans, Seattle, and Green Bay, like back to back to back. It's a rough schedule. Um, so, do I think that the Eagles can match up? Like, listen, the Cowboys have the worst defense I've ever seen, and that's part of the reason they should be 0 and 4. It's part of the reason, if not the biggest reason, they're 1 and 3. But that offense is scary. And I think that offense is probably good enough to take the East. So, the Eagles are playing for one of those extra wild card spots. Luckily enough, they have a tie on their record. It should be a win. They should be three and one, but they're not. Um, even in an expanded playoffs, I think they get in. They're not a Super Bowl team. They're just not. It's like the Phillies. If they made the playoffs, they just gotten that ass kicked by the Dodgers. You know, the, the Eagles will come in. They'll go to Seattle and in, in the, the first week of the playoffs, they'll get bounced out real quick. But like, it's just to get there. I just want to see Carson in a playoff game. He start. He played for what two series before he had to leave yeah, the last nine one. Nine minutes. Give me Carson. Give me that's, playoff Carson. That's what I this want that experience. About for me. Yeah, that's I what agree. the Syrians about. This season is about that because we got cap issues coming up in the next couple of years. We have no idea what we're doing at receiver. So like, just get me there. Let me see Carson in the playoffs, and I'd be okay with that. For season. for me, so reevaluating, readjusting, you know, uh, expectations. Here's what I want. I want, at the end of this year, I would like to feel somewhat warm about Howie Roseman, although I know at the end of this year, I'm still going to be hashtag fire Howie. Um, I want to feel good about Doug's play calling and, and just him as a general, uh, him, him in general as a management. coach. Um, and, and what I really want is, is to feel really good about my quarterback, and I want overall just to feel like next year we're going to have a shot to go to the title. You know, just to just yeah. to, we have yet to try to defend. You're wearing the Super Bowl chain. We haven't. We never got to defend that, man. And it just feels like so much was robbed, like over the last couple of years, between a lot of things. And and yeah, injuries are one of the reasons, but that's not the main reason. There's there's been a lot uh, of, of you know to to blame. So I know Doug <clears throat> got us a Super Bowl. Let's not forget, and I'm gonna get laughed at for this. Let's not forget he didn't call Philly Philly. Yeah, Nick, Nick Foles, Foles called Philly Philly. Okay, I'd be interested to see what play Doug would have called there. It wouldn't have been Philly Philly. So, uh, I I am not one of these like Doug defenders who says he got me a Super Bowl. Now he's like Bill Cower, who I wanted out of town, then he wins a Super Bowl, and now he's a Saint again. I don't want. I'm not on that part. I don't think Doug is an elite coach. I don't think Doug is an elite play caller. I scratch my head three, five times a game at some of the play calls he has, especially on had, first and fourth down. He had some good ones. Uh, he against did. San Fran. Let's give him some credit. He did. But, but, but he, he also. But he's an. But he's an NFL coach. That's what he gets paid to exactly. do. Like, yeah. Why are Why are we saying great job for doing your job? Yeah. He's still bringing out Jalen Hurts, and he's like, here's the thing. I actually don't mind the Jalen Hurts packages. Me neither. Like, do fun. it in third and one. Do it in like you were fourth and one, and he actually had a really good play call where you had once drop out and then went right back in and, and did it. But those are the plays that Jalen Hurts should be on the field for. When you yeah. know you're going to be quarterback sneaky, 
get another, you know, have him motioning. That's when Hurts should be on the field in, in third and one, fourth and one, two-point conversion situations. Not after Carson Wentz just makes two great runs. He's in a drive, and he's, he's, he's vibing and, and flowing, and oh, now we're going to take him out. Or, or even worse, we're going to put him on a wide receiver where any quarterback that's feeling frisky at any time can blow him up. If you're going to put Jalen Hurts in, take Carson Wentz out. Or line Carson Wentz up as the quarterback. That's the big be issue. Thing too. The big issue is Jalen Hurts still hasn't thrown an NFL pass. Like and he looks like he's you, trying to do everything to avoid it. You know what you're getting when Hurts is on the field. He's touching the football in some capacity, and he is running with it or he's handing it off. It's predictable, and you saw it against the Niners when they tried to do the reverse and then throw it back to Carson. But there was a defender on Carson, so Jalen ran it out for two yards and then ran out of bounds, and the play got fluffed out because it's so predictable. What you should do, Doug is surprise everyone and have Jalen throw the football. If you're going to do that weird crap, have him throw the football. Because guess what? What's the worst that can happen? Take, like, make it truly unpredictable. I don't understand the Wildcat because you know that the direct snap, the running back's not going to throw it. He might one out of ten times, but I'm not defending for the minority. I'm defending against the 90%, and I'm going to just think he's going to run it. So I'm going to stack the box. When I see Jalen Hurts under center, I'm stacking the box. That's what I'm doing. Make him throw the football. And Doug, get creative, man. Let's see a flea flicker. That'd be sick. I would love as long as Carson's not the receiver. Get, that exactly. would be sick. Yeah. Or if Carson oh. is the receiver, have it be in the end zone, Philly Philly style. You know, but I can't yeah. have I can't have Carson Wentz risking taking a, a hit on the open field. Like we don't. If look, I as much as I loved seeing Carson tuck the ball and run, he was making great decisions. When he does that, I'm still very weary of the hit open field. Now. Last game, he did a great job at avoiding that. He's got three rushing touchdowns. It was a wicked run. Wicked run that, for that touchdown. That touchdown move was... That was wicked. Dead. He put the dead leg on him. I thought it was Cam Newton out there. <laughs> uh, man, that, that was, was a wicked. sick juke. Um, yeah. But yeah, and that's... Look, that's why that's why we we love Carson. But then it's, you know, that, that first interception... That was that. That was like nah. Know, that wasn't on Carson. It wasn't. That was a tip. That was a tip ball. That was, wasn't on Carson. It's still. It was a play that I think he held on for a little bit. I think he could have thrown it away. Um, you know but, what it was on Carson was that interception against the Rams when they were driving and he threw it in double coverage in the end zone. Like that's the infuriating stuff. Yeah, both Carson. of his Rams no interceptions t- were were. That was were rough. That was his worst game. As a sure. pro. As a pro. Yeah. Uh, maybe outside of that game in Seattle where they got blown out. Like it was, it was rookie a rough season. One. Was that too? I think no, that was in seventeen. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, we Brown. won like nine in a row. Then we went up to Seattle and lost like forty-five-three. It was like embarrassing. Does, yeah. So does Keith I, says every interception is the quarterback's fault. Does Keith say that? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't heard Keith say that. I, I feel like every time Wentz throws an interception, I see Keith on on Twitter blaming the offensive line or something. <laughs> He's told me that. All right, all right. Hey. I I'm gonna use start using those words against him, Nick. I like that. I'm glad I'm getting some some. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You guys you guys follow Keith on Twitter. It's like all I keep seeing is him bitching about the offensive line, and he ain't wrong. But he does it after Wentz throws an interception, and it's like, ugh. hey man, my lotta played a good game. Did he? He did. He did. I mean, he, did. Like, seriously. he didn't play a great game, but he played a good game. Did he? Because what I saw. Now I'm looking with maybe somewhat venomous eyes. I saw a guy that just kept getting pushed into the quarterback's lane time and time again. But it's better than getting pushed around. He didn't okay. give a free Fair he didn't point. give up free rushes to Carson's blind side. And in reality, in the guy's first <laughs> NFL start, what else do you want? Yeah, and I guess I guess you're right. I need to be taking those things into consideration, but I just but, keep seeing all of this love for the well, because of the freakish for athleticism the in the of upside. Jeff, you know, <laughs> I and got like, it, oh, but now man. he's had a game under his belt. The hey, Steelers have leg- the, the Steelers him. have one of the legitimately best defenses in football. So this is the thing. He's already got his game under his belt. Now we can start evaluating Mylotta like we do the rest of the offensive line. <laughs> so, like, I, I think this is a big game for him against Pittsburgh coming up, and I'm ready to to judge him just like I would Jason Peters, who is was <clears throat> the most hilarious thing about the Eagles offseason was that whole re-signing Jason Peters and giving him more money to <clears throat> suck and go on IR. <clears throat> yeah, um, I mean, and that's yeah. you knew that was coming, and that's why I said if you're going to give him more money, make it incentive laden. I and didn't love. I don't. I didn't think Malata played great. I just thought he played well. He got the job done. Carson wasn't under a ton of duress 
you know, he might have been getting pushed into him, but it's better than a free run at the quarterback. So, you know, I, I'm okay with it. I'm I'm I am willing to extend the Jordan Mailata experiment. That's where I'll stand. Well, uh, kind of like the Phillies conversation, but what other choice do we have, right? Um, so, so yeah. So isn't that guy from the, the Saints who was a former Pro Bowler still available? Like, I think they could sign him. Yeah, him. and I get um, uh, his name's uh, Dave David McLean, I think, on Facebook. Um, I see him mentioning it quite often on our Facebook comments. Well, there you go. Facebook.com slash War Room Philly. So they have uh, options, you know, like they could go sign a veteran cornerback <laughs> or, you know, Muhammad Sanu. But God forbid, what do we know? Yeah, yeah. I don't know that I need Sanu, but oh my god, I would love it. Are you kidding me? Do we really just need a veteran? Another, just a veteran. A, a do you want? Wait, wait, do you want? Just like I know we caught the. Do you want Travis Fulgham catching big passes every game? Like, do you want John Hightower on fourth and four well, to have? Well, to here's make the that thing: catch? can can Muhammad Sanu, or is he just going to be another Alshon Jeffrey and Deshaun Jackson just be hurt the entire time? Oh, well, he wasn't hurt in San Fran. That's what I can't have. It's just another old injured player um, bah, for the rest of the year. Like whatever. They're not going to go make a I trade mean, to, to your credit. What's it hurt? Um, what's it hurt? It, right. AP week go. nine. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, that's the first I'm one of the desperate. year. That's I'm the first that AB of the year. There it is. Where are we at? Week four, week five. Week uh, five. Antonio Brown has been mentioned. Ding, 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 ding. Well, um, it's only his, his <laughs> suspension's already halfway up. <laughs> That's insane. Um, so we got like 15 minutes. You want to go flyers a little bit? Yeah, we can. We can do. We can do a little bit. I, I was. I was. I realized as we started talking uh, Eagles that that we hadn't talked flyers. So so yeah, uh, we can we can go flyers and and maybe jump back into the birds if if uh, need be. Well, let's finish up the birds. Then. I mean, we got Pittsburgh. What are you feeling? <laughs> See. Going in, Pittsburgh is coming off of a buy now. We have to remember that. And they're, they're yeah, rested. but we're coming off that dub. Let's go. Uh-huh. Let's go. I, I, Eagles 65, Pittsburgh 3. Let's I, go. I actually I can see a world where the Eagles win this game. I really can. Um, I thought that next week would be the Eagles' first win. Now I'm not so sure. Like, Can they win both of these games? Um, what are the Steelers this year? I mean, they're 3-0. and Yeah. Um, they're coming off a bye. Go ahead. What were you going to say? But- Carson Wentz's rookie season, game two or three, Pittsburgh, off of a playoff appearance, one of the best teams in football. What did the Eagles do? They won like 31 to three. They dominated Pittsburgh in every facet of that football game. Pittsburgh has beaten, what is it? The Texans by six, the Dolphins. Like, I'll bring it up as a matter of fact. Well, you, you talk. Real quick, I will bring this up. I was actually looking at the Steelers. Uh, where is it at? So, uh, oh, here it is. They they've beaten the Broncos without a starting quarterback. They've beaten the Texans, who have the worst coach in football. Thank goodness he's gone. And they beat the Giants by like seven. They haven't beaten anybody. Yeah, they haven't played anybody. You yeah. don't know what Pittsburgh is yet. So like, exactly. just so to bring their record into it, it's not fair. That's why I said, what are because we they are three and zero, but what are they? You know, and we know, we saw at the end of last year they were a team that kind of rallied around whatever was left. Um, but you know, I think I think it's a very winnable game. Um, uh, and, and Juju scares me against our corners. Juju scares me. He could have ten catches for you know a hundred and sixty in a touch. We haven't uh, seen Deont- that. We haven't seen that top get blown off yet, and, and, and it, this could be the week. Deontay Johnson is decent. James Conner, if he's healthy, he's a good running back. Like they have a good Eric Ebron. You know, he could be a hit or miss tight end, but he could be good. Ben's healthy-ish. So like, and their defense is monstrous. So this could be a seventeen ten game. Like that could what this that's what this game could have to be in order for the Eagles to win seventeen. I, I was gonna say that plays like that. that plays more into the Eagles uh, to, to win. I think well, they can't sc- they they can barely score points. So that's that's the rough thing. But the Eagles they just don't score enough points. The the Steelers defense is gonna double Zach just like the, the Niners did. They're gonna force Miles who. I don't know what he was doing in that final drive. He wasn't out there. That was yeah, we need to start seeing some Miles Sanders in the fourth quarter, or, or yeah. you know, something's up. And Something I, has to be up. And honestly, it'd be also nice if you know, what if what we brought in Devonta Freeman? Wouldn't it be nice if he kept him here? Or you know, you, 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 again, all all of us as fans saw we're going into the running back situation like this, and and here we are. 
Miles Sanders, the, the Eagles at one point on, on Sunday night went 17 plays without Miles Sanders getting a touch and like and a rush more specifically. And they were winning all like, game. What, like, what are you doing? Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't understand. That's, that's Miles Sanders needs 20 that's... carries. He needs four catches. Touch them 25 times. Get him in Minimum. space. Figure it out. That, like, you're As... not going to beat this Steelers team by going deep to Travis Fulgham. You're As, not. Especially with when a team has uh, this level of wide receivers. You need to be feeding him the ball. First and second down, when Carson Wentz is struggling, feed him the rock. First and second down, make third down your first you know, throwing play. Yeah. Um, it, it no more. The, the, the Boston Scott thing is done. We've saw he he averaged two yards a see, uh, carry last year, and we let it go because he was scoring big touchdowns. Yeah, and quite frankly, Sanders was hurt. He's not very good. He's your third he's, down he, back. He's a, he's he, your third backup. You know him and Clement both suck. Chris get him in space, and he's decent. He's not a he's not a between the gaps runner. We don't have that right now. Sanders is good, but he's not a wonderful between the tackles kind of runner yeah. north south. Uh, you know, it was tough to not have that big bruiser like a Jordan Howard. I thought he brought a lot to the team last year. But you, this is what you got, and this is what you're rolling with. Yeah. And so, you know, do I think the Eagles can win? Yeah. I, You know, in all seriousness, I, I think Pittsburgh probably wins this game, and I probably win it by six to seven points. But if the Eagles do win, it's because Miles Sanders got 25 touches. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um all right. Well, let's. Well, while we got about a little bit left in the show, let's let's talk a little. little squeeze in some Flyers hockey. We had a draft. Um, we had Matt Niskanen retire, which is on the surface a bad thing, but when you dig a little deeper, is it? Uh, we got some trade rumors in the wings. Yes, it is. Um, yes, it is. It, it is a bad thing, you say? Or? It is. Yeah, well, yes. Yes, it is. I'll, we'll talk. Okay. So, yeah, but let's let's get into it then. Um, uh, obviously, well, let's do this. Let's take it back to the bubble. Um, was the season, I'm going to ask the cliche, was it a, a success? Was it a failure? Like, how do you feel at the end of that season? Because it obviously left all of us wanting more. Um, yeah, that's that's a success, isn't it? It's A, a success is you want more. Well, it's, all right, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it, yeah. If, I would if say we were all apathetic usually. and didn't give a crap, then there wouldn't be a success. Yeah. Like the Phillies, the season's over and no one cares. Yeah. Well, because, no yeah, one cares. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Every, the, the biggest storyline after the Phillies success were done were fire your GM and, and, and re-sign your catcher. It wasn't the fact that Bryce Harper struggled for the majority of the second half of the season. It wasn't the fact that Reese was out. It wasn't the fact that our bullpen sucked anymore. The same thing. It was people were apathetic, but people are excited about the Flyers. You know the issue. The issue is special teams. Fix the power play. That is probably more coaching than personnel. You're hampered by a couple of big contracts. Niskanen retiring gave you a little bit of wiggle room. They have about eight million to play with uh, after they'll sign their RFAs, more like seven. That's not a place I want to be. I don't want to overbid for a Petrangelo. I don't want a Tory Krug. He can't play a full season. I'd like a Tyson Barry, but I don't know if you're going to have the cap space to sign him. Like they're in a good spot, but it is rough that your leader and ultimately <laughs> the reason we won that Radko Gudis trade. Niskanen had an incredibly solid season, and I was primed for another one. You know, I didn't think the Flyers needed to do too much tinkering to be a to be a contender in the Eastern Conference. You know, I know that the Rangers got a lot better. I think the Flyers had a good draft. We won't really see the fruit of that probably for two years. But you have Zamula. You have Cam York, you know, probably in the next year or two ready to go. This team is loaded with prospects. Bobby Brink, add Tyson for uh, to add Forrester to that mix. Add the uh, the defenseman they took in round two today to that mix. You have one of the best prospect pools in hockey. You have the best goaltender you've had since Ron Hextall. Like, this team is in a good spot. They're actually making waves in the media when they're playing. People are going to look forward to January 1st when hockey starts. I am excited for this team. Can, can we get I a don't, winner classer, classic opening? How awesome would that be? I, I don't know how much they're going to go out and, and spend or what they're going to spend it on. You know, I, I like the rest of the world, would have loved to see a Patrick Line a trade. Um, I, I just I hope they don't go out and oversign for Petrangelo. The guy's thirty something years old, thirty, thirty one years old, and you're gonna give him eight million dollars a year. The only way I see that happening is if you can shed Jake's contract, JVR, or Ghost. And that doesn't happen until next year when Seattle comes to town and takes one of them for the expansion draft. So there there's some still some cap issues, even though, you know, we we have a little bit of wiggle room here. I I just think they go after like a Tyson Barry and they call it a day. I don't think they're gonna do much. 
Yeah, while while like the splashes, you know, we always want the splashes as fans. I do think that like getting a guy like Patrick Leane is is a pipe dream. Um, it, it may be possible, but I still think it's a pipe dream. Um, He's a uh, listen. We want the sniper. Go out, get me Tyson Barry, get me Bobby Ryan, and I'm fine. Oh, there would, it honestly, is, Bobby Ryan. I would, be, I would honestly be fine with that offseason. Get me a third line center who can score, or a third line winger like Bobby Ryan who can score me, you know, fifteen goals and and be a good solid player. You can put him on the power play. He adds depth to it. Give me Tyson Barry who can quarterback a power play, and I am fine with that. That would actually be a pretty decent offseason. Yeah, I'm I'm willing to roll with Ghost. I think that he probably still has some trade value around the league, although you're not going to get much back for him because of the contract. If you could get anything for JVR, I would do it. Um, almost the same with Jake Voracek, although I don't say that with as much disrespect as I did last offseason. He was offseason. our best player in the playoffs. Exactly, so. exactly. And that's that's why I got to put some respect on his name. Um, but, but as far as, you know, I, I would still... I would still look to trade him, being smart about my cap, um, uh, and, and man, I think like, that's what I think that's what people you, they hear trade Voracek. What are you nuts? But it's like you got to look forward. You got to look at that cap, and and if you can get rid of some of that, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm looking to do it and, and and add offense elsewhere. At this point of their respective careers, I think Bobby Ryan in the right situation is the poor man's JVR. Uh, well, I think he can give you. The production JVR did, I was but just at yeah. one sixth the cap hit. I was gonna, I was kind of working my way toward that, so I'm glad you just took that one timer right for me. Um, right. Yeah, it, that's, that's exactly. I think if you could get rid of JVR, slide Bobby Ryan into that role, um, you would have, like you said, it would it would feel a lot better because you'd you'd have that role, and he wouldn't be making the absorbent amount of money that JVR is making. Um, well, but, that was Hextall's biggest problem was that that yeah, contract and, oh. and and hey that was another one that when it happened i kept being like why do flyers fans not want to talk about it that was a great sign uh, it was a bad signing uh, if we wrong. got the jvr from, now from 2012 it would have been a great signing but you know jvr he, he's had injuries his first two years back with the team he doesn't have a lot of years or money left or i shouldn't say money he's got a lot of money he doesn't have a lot of years left on the deal so i'm not like super married to it he'll be gone soon enough i think ghost will be in seattle they're going to take ghost because uh, the Flyers are not going to protect him. So that's been my prediction from the day Seattle got approved. Is that'll, be, that'll be next season, right? Yeah, that'll be at the end of next season. I am still a Goss Despair believer. Yeah, um, I, I like this game. I'm not like where he was three years ago when he had the breakout. I'm not there, but I'm also not at he can't do anything right. I think he's right, right there in the middle. I look at I, it. Good. I don't know why AV didn't try him out against the Islanders. I know they were a big physical team, but like Haig had a pretty trash series and I just would have liked to see the change of pace and just like what he could have done. But him with Justin Braun just didn't work. So he needs the right pairing. Um, there isn't really like that right now. Uh, I don't know who he would pair with maybe Haig, but um, I'm still yeah, in on Ghost. Sandheim is almost like too good for him. Sandheim's with Meyer. <laughs> yeah, that exactly. Pairing, it's that's like, pairing we have. Like, of course that would work. Um, but you know, Ghost is what he like. He's he's a third line defenseman that can that you you know what he is, and if you can pair him with the right right guy, I think he's a pretty damn good third line defenseman. When you realize he's, what you're he's getting also, from, him. he can also be the power, the quarterback of your power play. And, and I was going to say, what other third line defenseman can be you know a, a quarterback on a power play? Um, yeah, he can probably be a not many. Too. So uh, again, I. I I like his game. I see some some you know. Obviously, there's there's the turnovers or they they are what they are. Um, but but he's a guy. He's he's kind of a risk, and I I, I like that from the Flyers back end. Um, so I, I can I can deal with that from one player. Chuck Fletcher knows what he's doing. Like let's just have faith. If we can have faith in one front office in Philadelphia, yes. besides the union, that's the only. It's one the Flyers right now. To be honest with you. It's the Flyers, uh, man. I, I want to get Chuck back Parker. there with the Sixers. I would love to be there with the Eagles, but I'm nowhere close to it and same with the Phillies. Fletch, trust trust the Fletchers, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> He knows what he's doing. Trust in his moves. Trust all of his trades. He's yet to get one wrong, quite frankly. Nate Thompson, if that's his worst deal, then that's a success. If yeah. Nate Thompson, your fourth-line center, is the deal that he got wrong, fine. Like, he did a lot of great things. I trust what he does. I think he's a smart GM. I think he's got smart people in play. I think we have the best coach in the city. I said it in Elaine Vigneault. Like, maybe Girardi. I do believe in Girardi. But 
Like, this team is on the right path. They have what the Phillies and Eagles lack, that's young, controllable talent, Mm -hmm. in a farm system that the rest of the league envies. So the Flyers are in a great spot. Don't expect too much on Friday when free agency opens. Yes, they could surprise us all and make a splash for line A. They could make a splash and sign Petrangelo. I don't want that, quite frankly. It will just eat up so much money. I would love Tyson Barry and Bobby Ryan, and I would legitimately say I'm done for the offseason, unless you work a trade to free up more cap space on like a JVR thing. But that's what you can expect for the Flyers this offseason. I'd be fine with it, and they're going to be right in the thick of things come January 1st for that Metro crown. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Can't wait for everything to start back up. Um, but, yeah, we are we are uh, right up against it. So I want to want to thank everyone, and uh, if we have any final thoughts uh, for tonight's show, Greg, anything you want to feel free to get some plugs in, and any any final thoughts? And, yeah, you know. I'll I'll get a plug in in a second, but I do owe somebody an apology, yes. so I do want to I do want to eat the crow because I I recognize where. Listen, I firmly believe that I'm not going to sit here and, and and be on a pedestal or whatever, but I firmly believe that if JT and Reese don't get hurt, we're watching Phillies baseball right now and not doing this show. Um, they're probably playing the the Braves right now. So, and they'll be in the 19th inning because that game ended hours ago. But still, you get my point. Yeah. Um, but but I had made a bet with one of our our fine viewers, Joe Heston, and I said that the Phillies they're going to finish 500 and they're a second place team. He said there's no chance they finish near 500. The loser would have to come on the show and apologize. So I'm here to say, Joe, you were right, man. You got it right. Um, kudos to you for wanting our team to fail. Uh, <laughs> that's that's fine. But in all seriousness. Um, Listen, you were right. I was wrong. I apologize, sir. Thank you for making that bet because, quite frankly, it was super fun to watch this team. And every time the bullpen blew a loss, I was like, here comes the tweet. Uh, <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. Yeah. To, and I was to inevitably have tagged in it as well, which is great. It, it was, was like, super fun to have, yes. honestly, that back and forth. It's great to just have listeners to your show Ant, that are super invested in that, even want to make those type of bets. Yeah. It's great that you have viewers like that. And Joe's been an OG since you and I had the show. So it's, oh, it was yeah. fun to, to interact with like that. On a separate note, I will say, please don't ever root for your team to lose just so some schmuck can come on the internet and apologize. Yeah, um, that's not the way you want to root for a team. But uh, it's in all seriousness, Joe, good looking out, man. Good looking. <laughs> that's all I got. Oh, uh, listen to We Podcast and We Know Things. That's Absolutely. my podcast. Absolutely. I, I so. can't recommend that enough. I do it every Friday. It's like my Friday thing. It, it yeah, makes comes sense. out Friday mornings. We talk about gaming and movies and music and movies and all that nerdy <laughs> crap that you don't get here. But uh, if you want my thoughts on Tony Hawk Pro Skater and Crash Bandicoot, check out oh, We Podcast yeah. and We Know Things. Oh, and I do. And I do want your thoughts. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, thank you all for uh, tuning in today. We've um, yeah, we've gone a little, little over, so I'm going to put a, a screeching halt and pull the handbrake. Um, thank you all for for tuning in, and it was it was a ton of fun. Greg, thank you for uh, for coming on. Um, uh, we're, we're looking forward to uh, having you on again shortly, and, and the whole nine. Um, but yeah, so with that, uh, thank you guys all, and I am Anthony Pinto, and I'm Greg Hall, and we are out of here. Go Fusion. <laughs>